The traditional perception of Catherine is this meek and mild wife, very much the England's last truly medieval queen, pious, devout, devoted, charitable works, much beloved. Supposedly it was supposed to be fruitful, and of course the fatal flaw was that she wasn't. Of her six children, only one daughter, future Mary I, lived. But actually, she wasn't like that. She was a woman of great strength. When it comes to the crunch, when Henry decides he wants to divorce her or annul their marriage, um, her conscience takes her in a completely different direction and she is as inflexible as he is. And she's very, very strong and she, she makes this stand. But Catherine defied him and, she, and Henry was frightened of her. So was Cardinal Wolsey, so was Thomas Cromwell. For the simple reason that her nephew was the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V and he was the most powerful ruler in Europe. And if he had chosen to champion her cause actively, he could have brought an army into England and invaded and forced Henry to take Catherine back. It was all hanging on Catherine inviting him to do it. Catherine did not, but she could have done it. I keep strictly to the historical sources. In fact, that's, that's the great fun of it. But, the, but where, the, where the fiction comes into play is where the sources cannot be all explained, where there are gaps, and, and always there are gaps. Um, people's emotions, people's motives, what goes on behind the scenes, people's private lives, their love lives. And I do feel that writing fiction as a historian gives you insights into history that aren't permissible to a historian. And yet there are emotional insights that it can give you. you can, it can actually take you on an emotional journey that makes sense, whereas the history, you couldn't go that far in a history book. Mm -hmm.